Hi and welcome to the fifth episode of the Django Package Review Series. In this episode we're going to be reviewing Django Defender. You can find that package by going to djangopackages.org and you can search for the security grid which is basically a group. So here's the security grid that you can see there. If you go there you'll find a whole bunch of packages related to security and one of them is Django Defender. You can then click here to go to the link on GitHub and to follow along you can use the Django package review repository. The link is in the description down below. All you need to do is just go to the branch of the video that you want to follow along with. You can start off on master and if you code along you'll end off with the code at the end of this video which is in this branch number five Django Defender. So you can just clone or download this repository and once you have it open in your editor we can get started. So Django Defender here on GitHub says it's a simple, super fast Django reusable app that blocks people from brute forcing login attempts. And if we scroll down here, we can read more about it. We have the documentation, which I'll open up in another page. And so I'll just talk a little bit more about what it is telling us over here. So some of the features, it logs all login attempts to the database. You can rate limit based on username and IP address. And then for configuration, you need a Redis server which we'll show how to set up in this video as well. And you can also clean up all the attempts using a management command, just to name a few of the features. So this is what it looks like when you log into the admin, you'll see some of the blocked logins by IP address, by username. So that's basically everything about it. We can go and copy this command to go and install the package. So I'm just gonna go and activate my virtual environment and then install the package. Now the requirements here specifies the Python and Django versions and it also says you need Redis. Now to install Redis, I'll just bring this in over here. This is redis.io and it depends on what operating system you're using. If you're using Mac, then the simplest way to install it is just to go with brew install Redis. That's gonna be the simplest way to do it. And once you have it installed, you can run redis-server in your terminal and this is what you'll see printed out so you'll know that it's running and you can ping this server by going redis cli ping and then you see i get pong returned back so like that so that way i know that the server is running and we're going to need it for the Django defender to work properly so i'm going to open up another terminal and with Django defender installed we can then go back over here and add Defender as an installed app. So I'm just gonna do that in my settings. And then we'll add the Defender middleware. So just add that in there. And then we need a URL for the Django Defender URLs. So I'll just put that there and I'm gonna change it to a path as well. And then import include. And then like that, we can then go and run migrations so I'll say manage.py, migrate, and I'm just going to delete the existing database file there. There we go. So we've got the Django Defender migration there. Then I'll go and create a super user. And then go and run the server. Right, so we have that running. We can now go to the Django Defender documentation. We can go to installation, which is everything we just ran through now. And we can then go to how Django Defender works. Now, if I just scroll up a little bit, you'll see that there's also the section why not Django Access. And that's another package for security that works in a similar way to Django Defender. There's actually an entire GitHub discussion about merging the two projects, which I didn't see happen as they still both exist. But basically Django Defender's claim to fame is that it's trying to go for speed whereas Django Access is hitting the database quite a lot. And according to them here, it says author requests get slowed down by 200 to 300 milliseconds, which is why I'm reviewing the Django Defender package and not Django Access. But it's good to know that both these packages exist. And it does say that this project actually originated from the Django Access project. So here where it talks about how it works, basically when someone tries to log in, 
It checks if they're currently blocked, which is done by the username or the IP address. And then if they are blocked, then it sends them to a blocked page telling them that they are blocked and says gives an estimate on when they will be unblocked. If they're not blocked, then it checks to see if the login was valid. And if it was valid, then it resets any of the failed login attempts and then logs them in. If the login was not valid, then it's going to add the username and IP address for that attempt to log in to the cache, which is done through Redis. And if that brings them over the limit, it adds them to a blocked list. Otherwise, if they were not over the limit, then it's just going to allow them to try and log in again. So that's the basic just of how this package works. And the key here is that it uses a cache backend. That's really important to understand about this package. So then it talks about how we can customize Django Defender. And we just do all of this inside the settings.py file. So some of the things to take note of are the login failure limit. So meaning the number of login attempts allowed before a record is created for the failed logins, which is defaulted to three. Then you have the failure limit on a username. You have the failure limit on an IP address. You can decide if you want to only lock out IP addresses and not usernames. You can define a cool off period. You can define the lockout template as well. If your user model has a custom username field, you can specify the defender username form field, which is default to username. We'll just keep it like that for now. You have the defender lockout URL, which is the URL they get redirected to if they're locked out. And then a very important one here is the defender Redis URL. And by default, that's going to point to Redis on your local host, which is good because if you just have Redis running like we did over here, then you don't need to configure anything else because that port 6379 is the default port for Redis that's running right now. You can decide if you want to use Celery as well. And you can even go and adopt this for other packages such as the Django REST framework, which is quite nice. So with that, let's go and try and log in to the admin. And what I'll do is open up an incognito window where I will actually log into the admin. And here you'll see we have Defender with access attempts. And you can see that this was the attempt made right now where I actually did log in. So there you can see login valid. We get the username, we get the path that they attempted to log in with, and even the user agent, which is quite nice. So now let's come back here, and I'm going to try and log in with any credentials, really. Log in. So it was failed. Refresh here. And now you can see we get an invalid login with the username, the path, everything the same. And if we take a look at the default configuration, then the login failure limit, which is the number of login attempts allowed before a record is created for the failed logins is three. So I'm going to come back here, try login, try login again. So right now we have three failed login attempts. So if I try this again, then now you can see account locked, too many login attempts. Please try again later. And that's all being done through Redis. Now what I'm going to do is specify a custom lockout template because we get access to these context variables, the cool off time seconds and cool off time minutes, as well as the failure limit, which is the number of failures before you get blocked. So we can just go and specify this in our settings. So I'll just do that over here. And this is a path to a template that we want to use. So what I'll do is just create a templates folder and then here inside the settings, we'll just add os.path.join the base directory with templates. And then in here, we'll say defender lockout.html. And I'll just go and put a boilerplate HTML here. And we'll say this is Django Defender. And here we're going to get access to those context variables where the first one is cool off time seconds. So what I'll do is put a message in and say, you can only log in after, and then we'll grab cool of time minutes, minutes and seconds, and say the cool of time in minutes there, and then failure limit is the number of failures before you get blocked. So we'll say the current failure limit 
is failure limit, and I'll just wrap these both in paragraphs. Right, so like that. We can specify the template here, which is going to be defender lockout.html. Let's check the Django server. Okay, refresh here. And then we get the current failure limit is three. You can only log in after five minutes or 300 seconds. So, okay, so I guess we don't need to display both of these. We can just say minutes like that. But I guess it depends on how you want to display it. And so that's really all there is to go through in this package. It just comes down to how you want to customize all of these settings, but everything is relatively straightforward. Another thing here to note are the Django signals. So if you want to implement your own custom logic when someone gets blocked, so like for example here, if someone gets blocked by their username, you can then send an email or do whatever you really want to do based off of that signal. Same thing for an IP address. And then lastly, we can just take a look at the management command, which is to clean up the Django Defender records. And it says here, if you have a website with a lot of traffic, the access attempts table will get full pretty quickly. If you don't need to keep the data for auditing, then there's a management command you can use to clean it out. And it says it's going to look at the one setting, which is the Defender access attempt expiration, which is defaulted to 24 hours. So we don't have any attempts that are older than 24 hours. So running this command won't delete anything, but it's good to know that you can do this as well. And so that sums up the Django Defender package. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.